thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules um, to kind of join us and hear how we're thinking through this new online landscape. Um, we are lovingly calling it the wild, wild web. Um, it's a whole new frontier for your class content. And just know that whether or not you choose to work with Sawyer, we are here to help you as a small business owner. We provide a ton of resources, blog posts, Obviously, we would love for you to use our software and we're going to show you how easy it is. Um, but the most important thing for us is how do we help small businesses? How do we work with educational providers that are doing really remarkable things in their industry, in their neighborhood, um, and support that work? Whether you choose to do this on your own, whether you choose to work with us at Sawyer, just know that you have an amazing team of individuals uh, rooting for you, supporting you, and hopefully inspiring you to take your content online if you haven't done so already. So without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna talk through um, everything from our webinar today. So um, it's time for Sawyer Social Hour. We've been doing these for a lot of our providers. So when you become part of our Sawyer community, you get access to um, live webinars. We've been doing them every other week because there's been such a demand and a feeling of wanting to be connected to other people that are kind of going through this yourself. Um, so know that we are here. Um, we are here to help you and sit back, relax, and get ready to go online. If you have questions throughout, I have Ariana, who is my go-to um, right-hand lady. She uh, is amazing. She's part of our product marketing team. Um, we're here to kind of chime in on the chat. I will be doing a Q&A session. Um, at the end of today's presentation, but feel free to type in there. She'll kind of answer as many questions as she can. Um, I'll also be available, you know, kind of to pause. Um, everyone can kind of unmute themselves at any point, but for the sake of just the structure of the video, let's just go through uh, step by step and then we'll pause for questions at the end. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is a little bit about um, how to think through online activities how to create really engaging online content, how to play around with fun backgrounds like a few of us have here. Um, and then talking through how to sell online content. So there's a number of ways that you can go about this. So once you get past the hurdle of, okay, what software do I use? Do I use Zoom? Do I use GoToWebinar? How do you actually get people to access it? And that's really where Sawyer comes in um, or any other registration software that might have an online integration like we do. We make it as easy as possible for you to take registration for a number of reasons that's impactful and important, um, but also just to support how you're thinking through whether you're doing live recorded classes or pre-recorded classes and getting access through a number of pricing options. Um, that's kind of the way to think through that. And then some marketing strategies, how to get online, how to make this as exciting. You, you probably know very well how to sell to your current audience, but now you have sort of the, the exciting option to be able to reach a whole different audience of people that are interested in what you have to sell, um, that want to be part of this kind of digital community right now. Um, and so it's an interesting time to be able to creatively think through what are some easy ways to kind of market, get things up and running, and then we'll do some Q&A and I'll share some follow-up uh, tips and tricks and resources that we have for you guys as well. Sound good? Okay, let's get started. So who am I? Um, we work with children, so I felt like we needed a little throwback to the 80s. Uh, me, little Dana. Um, I am director of provider experience here at Sawyer. Don't you love that my mom put me in this lovely 80s jumpsuit? I remember hating this outfit so much, which is why like my face is that like fake little kid smile. Um, just know I have a ton of operational experience. I worked for a company called Kidville for 12 and a half years doing everything under the sun as you probably um, are used to doing as well. So everything from operations to speaking with families to developing programming and content for our teachers. And then once we started to franchise, uh, really how to take that concept and apply it no matter where you were in the world or what kind of space that you had. Um, so I'm, I'm really kind of good at understanding the operational challenges of being a small business owner and then how to scale your business and, and pivot. <laughs> and this is a great time to pivot. So if you're thinking of getting into this, if you've always had a passion that you have wanted to explore, now is really the time, you know, parents are, are most forgiving and customers are most forgiving as we kind of navigate this new um, online platform together. So just know that that everyone is in this, everyone is experiencing it, and it gives you a really exciting opportunity, I think, to pivot your brand and to, like I said, you know, communicate what you offer in a new variety of ways to a completely different audience, right? So um, we're gonna talk through that. So one of the first questions, right, how do you create engaging online content? So 
things that we're doing today, right? I think you all signed up via Sawyer. So you saw how our experience is kind of set up from the customer side of things, um, where you set up an activity, you take registration, and then 30 minutes prior, um, you get that join link and that reminder email. Um, you can also sync your calendar. So that's one of the things that we've kind of built into the platform very quickly once we realized that this was something that we needed to do to support our businesses going online. So when you're thinking through how you create engaging online content, the things to think about, right? Obviously, good lighting and sound go a long way. I'm just using my Mac laptop today. I think it's been working just fine. Um, I was talking to Kim, one of our participants on this call a little bit earlier before everyone joined. And one of the questions was, you know, I'm finding that the video is a little bit choppy. I'm having some speed issues. Make sure to troubleshoot that ahead of time. The easiest way to do it if you're testing out Zoom versus GoToWebinar or Google Hangouts, which we'll go through. Um, the biggest thing to do is to do a test run. Do a rehearsal. Um, if any of you are theater people like my previous life, theater dress rehearsal is very important. It helps you work out all of the kinks, helps you get familiar with what the experience is going to look like. And obviously from a tech perspective, make sure that you are not experiencing kind of delays. One of the things that I'll say um, from a delay perspective Obviously, Wi-Fi is, is huge, so testing your Wi-Fi to make sure it can handle bandwidth. If you're doing a lot of movement in your background, that's something that can sometimes slow down video, um, and so definitely you know, wanna make sure that anything you're doing um, from a background perspective is not a ton of movements, right? So you're speaking live to the camera. If you're doing an art project, for example, you wanna make sure that your video is probably post it a little bit further so that somebody can see what's working in front of them. You want to set up like a tripod of some sort to make sure that the view is consistent and what you want the audience to see. Um, curate your background, right? So if I didn't have this lovely curated background, what you would see is the back of my apartment, right? So if I did none, not as exciting, right? So if I do something that is on brand, that brings my classroom to life. Um, the other thing to think about is, um, oops, sorry, technical difficulties here. <laughs> um, so the other thing to think about is when you're looking at your um, kind of online, hold on one second, great. Okay, so when you're thinking about how you're presenting this information to a parent, you wanna make sure to teach whatever your instructor, whoever is running these classes for you, you want them to pay attention to that little green dot if you're using a laptop or a computer um, or a camera. They need to see what that focus point is because they should be speaking directly to the camera. Um, the other thing is volume. Be mindful of volume. You do not need to scream. It's as if you're talking to a good friend that's in the room with you. I am guilty of this. So no, please practice on camera. Test your volume. Test your video, what it looks like. Um, if you don't want to do a background like this, make sure that you're setting the stage for whatever your class is. So if you have an instructor that's teaching an art class, you can get really creative with your background by putting up like a little cute sign or saying welcome to my art room or any kind of branding if you have somebody on your team who can go above and beyond to set a little corner of their apartment um, to make it look as inviting and professional as possible. You know, we know that we're all stuck at home and kind of doing these classes on the fly, but sometimes doing it inside of a bedroom where someone can kind of look around and see background information is a little strange um, and not as inviting. So just be mindful of whatever that background experience is going to be. Um, if you have to buy equipment, I would say invest in a great microphone instead of a better camera. Um, and that's just really, again, it depends on like how, how productionized you really wanna go with this. If your business is small, you really don't need anything more than, I mean, iPhones, I, you know, any of the Apple products, any computers out there have really good um, visual uh, cameras and lenses. So don't stress too much about spending any additional money to, you know, kind of accomplish hosting a really great class. Um, sound is really important. So if you do find that you're doing a music class, for example, or something that you really want to translate um, well over recorded video, consider a microphone over anything. There are some really great ones that we'll share in our kind of resource roundup. A tripod is also good if you are thinking about doing those longer shots um, as opposed to doing kind of one-on-one -on -one to the camera like I'm doing today. So depending on the type of business you run, the type of activity that you're creating, these are some things to keep in mind for hosting a really great online class. The other tip that I'm going to give is polls. 
So I'm going to launch a poll as if we were teaching a kindergarten class, right? Or, you know, whenever kids can start to read. So what starts with the letter A? So does everybody see this poll on their screen? Feel free, vote. Polls are a really great way to create access and engagement for families that take the learning um, offline. So if you're muting everybody, but you still wanna create this real fun sense of engagement where parents can have their kids vote, you could do some really silly choices. Like if you're doing um, a theater class and you want people to call out you know, what happens in the scene, you can have them type into the chat, obviously, uh, but you can also launch polls because this is a really great way to test this. Um, polls and questions are supported in Zoom, GoToWebinar, um, Facebook Live and Instagram Live. So know that you can test this across multiple platforms, but it's a really great way that I kind of love sharing um, a quick tip just to make it a little bit more engaging. So I'm gonna end the poll and I'm gonna share the results. Great, you all know that Apple starts with the letter A, hooray. So this is just another way to, um, again, create engagement. It's a really kind of weird experience to have a child sitting you know, in their room at home. Um, the other pro tip that I wanna give people is how to spotlight someone. So I'm gonna spotlight Ariana because she has such a lovely background. So everyone say hi to Ariana. So if I'm doing a hello song with somebody and I really wanna create an exciting moment for Ariana, I can do like, okay, everyone, it's time to welcome our first guest today. Hello, Ariana. Hello, Ariana. Ariana, say hi, hello. Guys. Hello to you. And then I could move on and say, okay, now I'm going to spotlight Alexandra. Alexandra, I see you're in space today. Oh my goodness, that's so exciting. Welcome, thanks so much for joining us. All right, so Spotlight Video is another way um, to create these moments of magic for children that you can't do inside the classroom. So maybe you're losing that personal connection that you normally feel, but don't be afraid to create the online version of that because all of these um, products, whether you're using Facebook, Zoom, Go to webinar. All of them have really great ways to create engagement. Um, for everybody else, if you also want, you can give people a, an option to give you a little reaction to what you're saying. So if everybody wants to give me a thumbs up, you can see that little option there to do a little reaction. Here in Zoom, you could do a little clap. Um, so people can share that information um, to join in to the, the little bit of the dialogue. Um, you should see that in your settings. If you don't, um, no problem. It's just one of those settings that depends on what uh, version of Zoom you're using. So just know that that's another cute way to do a little thumbs up. You can also do a call and response, right? So I can say, can everyone hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Amazing, thank you for participating, Alexandra. Okay, so those are just some quick and easy tips and tricks on how to really bring the fun to this. Um, don't be afraid to play around. Don't be afraid to experiment. Get really excited to do this because there's so much that you can unlock. Um, from checking out online uh, ways to deliver your content. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation because I want to talk through some other ways. We just talked about ways to let your on-screen talent shine. Depending on who's running these classes, if that's you, don't be afraid. Everyone will forgive you. There are technical problems all the time. And as long as you can recover and remain calm, keep the tone positive, smile throughout. So if I click on the wrong thing, I'm going to be like, Okay, everyone, don't worry. I'm going to find out where that button went. So staying positive, staying connected. Um, and again, making sure that you're giving families a really easy, clear way to access this content, um, which we'll talk about with using Sawyer tools. But even if you want to just send out emails and links to your families, you can do that as well. We just build it into our system to make it as easy as one, two, three, right? Okay, so what are the different, so when we talk about streaming services. Sawyer is not a streaming service. We do not offer streaming for our classes, but what we do do is allow you to choose your own streaming service to deliver this content, right? So the ones that are out there that most of you have probably heard about, the most popular ones that we're finding and working with on a regular basis are Zoom. Zoom is what we're using today. Zoom, I, I love it. I know that there's some security issues and buzz around that. I put you all in a waiting room before you could join. That's an example of how you can kind of manage this. You can require passwords for parents. You can hide the link, which Sawyer Tools does automatically for you, so no one can kind of take and steal that URL and join um, earlier than what you want to allow. Um, you can also change your passwords and change your, your URLs for your Zooms all the time. So just know that even though there's some buzz around it right now, it still is, is really 
flexible, dynamic, and free for most users. Um, so it's still one to consider if you are thinking through this, right? Um, the other options are also going to be Google Hangouts, right? And so Google Hangouts, if all of you are using Gmail in some sh way, shape, or form, I think most people have moved away from Microsoft Office and, but if you do, no problem. You just, I would consider moving over to Google for your business. Um, and the reason for that is because it has a lot of free options for Google Hangouts and Google Classroom as well. Um, and these are really great if you're running a classroom. Um, so if you're coming from a school or you are an organization that wants a little bit more gated content, um, consider Google Hangouts and Google Classroom. Google Classroom has the added bonus of you're doing worksheets and storing some information in there as well that you want to kind of push through to each of these individual groups. So a group could be a, an individual class. It could be a certain grade. It could be a different organization or a private group that you're doing for, you know, kind of group um, tutoring or something like that. So if you're thinking more of an academic route, you might want to consider Google Hangouts and Google Classroom. The one caveat I'll give, um, I've been experiencing a little bit more lag time with Google Hangouts, especially if I'm doing screen share. So just know that. Know that if you have a large amount of children that are going to be joining, you might need to um, consider that um, and different structuring of how you want to run your programs. But we give some tips and tricks in these links that we'll share after the call as well. GoToWebinar and GoToMeeting is another popular one. It is a little bit more secure and they've been around for a lot longer in this capacity. It isn't free. Um, there is a free version, but most of the time, if you're going to have any video participation or encouraging engagement on video, it's not necessarily for that. But if you're doing a lecture or hosting something similar to what I'm doing today, you don't really care necessarily about the video engagement, but you just want people to be able to dial in, ask questions, have a chat going, definitely another option to consider. And then Facebook and Instagram Live, these are really popular for kind of large viewing. You want as many people to have eyes on your business as possible. Um, the other thing to know about Facebook Live, if somebody doesn't have a Facebook or Instagram Live is, is similar, they're all part of the same company. Um, the, if they don't have a Facebook or they're not a social kind of um, family, maybe the kid is a little bit younger, just know that that could be a barrier to somebody signing up. So if you are thinking through Facebook Live, it's a really great free resource. It's a great place if people are already familiar with going to Facebook and Instagram for your social platform as well. Um, but just keep in mind that it, it could be a little bit trickier for people that don't have access. It's not as user friendly um, and because essentially like they have to just be waiting for you to go live on Facebook. So sometimes it's not as clear of like, am I joining? Like, where do I click? And so that's the caveat that I give with Facebook Live. But you can have a ton more people viewing it. Um, you can have it stored automatically. The video is saved directly to your Facebook account. Um, so there are some pros and cons to doing Facebook and Instagram Live as well. Okay. So when I say the difference between so those were the live streaming classes, meaning I want to do something live. I want people to join in for that set amount of time. And then after the class is done, I have a recording, right? I'm recording today so that we can share it. But where do I actually store that, right? So when we talk about storing video or sharing stored video, we're talking about a hosting service. So the difference between a live stream service, sometimes they offer free hosting in, included as well. Like Google has Google Drive. Facebook is going to put it directly on their Facebook channel um, on your individual profile and page, but then there are these other outside hosting services. So you could teach a live class like this, but then maybe you want to give access to the families who may or may not have been able to join, right? So these are the services that you're looking at for hosting and storing that footage. So YouTube, obviously, no surprise there, right? YouTube and Vimeo are kind of two sides of a similar coin. YouTube is very popular. A lot of people know about it. There are some ways that you can make your content private and password protected. Um, on both YouTube and Vimeo. So if you are worried about just public audience and people watching things that they probably shouldn't be, you should be very aware of security and safety for your families, but also your own content. You don't want somebody to be able to steal something that is proprietary to you, right? So um, making sure that you're following the best practices for YouTube and Vimeo for password protecting or guarding some of that content. You can do private um, playlists on YouTube. It's one way of doing it for free where you can just share that private link. 
to specific people and they have to have a password to be able to view it. So you're not making it public on YouTube. Dropbox. Dropbox is great for large file sizes. It's also another way if you're running like more classroom and you want to include a combination of video and also printed materials, both Dropbox and Google Drive are the ones to kind of consider for that. Um, Dropbox, you can also kind of control who has access to download things. You can make sure that parents, you know, aren't necessarily downloading these videos and then sharing them with friends. There's a little bit more gated stuff that you can do there. Google Drive, um, if you're not doing a ton of like large files, like videos take up a lot of space. So Google Drive will run out of space, I believe at 10 megabytes, which is for free. Um, so just know that you may have to upgrade if you are using Google Drive or Dropbox. Um, they have both a free plan and a pro plan that are both very reasonable to, and you might already be using them um, to store your information. The other option is AWS. So if you're already using Amazon for storing cloud and, and photos, you can um, also use this for video. And again, have similar um, ways of restricting and giving access to specific folders or content video folders, if you will. Um, so you can set that up through Amazon Web Services. The ones we're seeing most commonly used with all of our business owners are really the YouTube and Vimeo. Those are just more popular. Um, Vimeo is what we use for our videos. Um, we have a pro account, but you can also feel free to use the free version as well to a certain point, depending on how often you're storing and saving and sharing videos, okay? All right, so. The main thing is then, where does someone like Sawyer come in? Like, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, I can just do all of this on Zoom. I can just set it up, push through a link to families and call it a day, right? And, and the reality is, yes, you could do that. Um, you're going to be missing some key information, which is where registration platforms really come in. And to be able to do everything all in one place, manage your streaming content, um, and then pushing through links even of that hosted content to families, you can do everything really easily using a software provider like Sawyer, right? So how do you sell this content online and why you should consider a registration software for your online classes, right? So beyond just, hey, I'm sending out a link to my existing families, the really the goal of all of this is yes, you wanna get your existing family staying happy, feeling connected during these times of quarantine, but you also want to potentially bring in new people finding out about your business. Um, you also want to have some flexible ways of sharing that information. You don't know yet what's going to work best for you. So you may want to test some different pricing structures. You may want to test some membership options or ways to kind of limit your access to certain um, content. You may want to create a schedule and see what works and have that analytic data to be able to say, hey, this is what's performing really well. And that's where registration software comes in, right? Because Zoom is going to give you some access, but it's really just based on who joins your actual Zoom call. So if you want to understand, okay, how many people RSVP for something versus how many actually attended, this is some stuff that you can start to do on a registration software. You also are going to be able to collect key information from customers. So the whole point of this is that you really want to increase awareness about your business and brand. So collecting email, right? If you're gating your content, at the very least, you want to, somebody to register for a free class, you want something in return. So collecting email, child information, address, any of those registration fields that you want to collect is really going to happen in a registration software like Sawyer. And we're going to walk through how easy it is to create an online class in Sawyer tools, but just know that registration software is really, you, you wanna make the process as easy as possible for a parent. You don't wanna to have to just send multiple emails to somebody with links, with private access. People are like, but I'm clicking on your website and I don't know where to go. So making sure that you have a partner in this with you is really kind of um, key to making it a, a seamless experience for parents. So there are a few different ways that you can do this. Um, you can share a direct link to a live stream class. So like today, you guys got an, a URL where you click join and you came right into our Zoom meeting, right? So you can do this for any of the software companies that you choose to do for your live stream, right? So all the ones that we talked about, the Facebook, Instagram Live, Google Hangouts and Zoom, you can take registration on Sawyer and that link, whatever software you're using for it, will be the link that uh, it gets populated automatically and dynamically through that join now link. You can gradually release content. So I'll show you um, membership is another pricing option. So if you just say, hey, I have all of this recorded content already. I'm creating like worksheets for my parents. I don't really want to do an online 
live experience. It doesn't really work for my business, but I want to give access to somebody who wants to pay or do a free content membership that they're giving you their email. Um, there's a way to do that through our membership functionality. You can also pre-record a video, have a private playlist or library that you then push through a message to parents after they've registered for it. They've given, you know, sort of them your access, right? And so by being able to um, go ahead and give them that access through a really kind of gated process by they have to register for it and then you're going to share all of the final details with them afterwards. You can do that through a registration software. And then you can also do that for shared worksheets. You can create a Google Drive. We support HTML links. So you can put all of that in your online class access instructions and more. So without further ado, what does it look like, right? So I wanna do a live demo of how quick and easy it is to build this in Sawyer Tools. So, um, okay, let's do a share screen. Sorry. Oop. Okay, great. Okay, can everyone give me a thumbs up if you can see Sawyer Tools, if you're on video, awesome. Thank you guys, awesome. Okay, so here we are in Sawyer Tools. If you have already done a demo with one of our amazing sales reps, great, congrats. I hope you found it interesting and exciting. If not, no worries, there's time to schedule one, but we're gonna do a quick one together just so I can show you what the functionality looks like. So you'll see here, the upcoming tab is where I can see all of my amazing classes. This is my favorite provider account, Sawyer School of Magic. Obviously fake, but for the, the witches and wizards that are on this call today, welcome. Uh, you are in good company. So our Sawyer School of Magic here, everything starts with our listings. So here under listings, you can see that I've already set up Cauldron Cooking one-on-one. -on -one. And let's open this up. So what this looks like when you're building your class, you can call it whatever you want. You have a, a variety of beautiful colors to choose from. You can select which category. So if it's academic, all the way through camps, coding, cooking, we have all of the topics that parents are searching for and what populates on highsawyer.com, which I'll talk about in a little bit. You're going to designate that this is an online class. And what that does is it's going to give some additional functionality. That's where we can support pushing through this like join link. It'll also uh, indicate to families that it's an online program. So as you're scheduling it, they won't be thinking like, oh, I have to go to a physical space. Not that anyone is thinking that way these days. Um, so you're going to check off here that it's an online class. You're going to put whatever description you want. And again, that HTML code here, you wanna put in some live links specifically for your program. You're going to put what uh, age range you work with. So if you wanna do a wide range, you can do that. If you just want adults to be able to register, maybe you're doing just family registration. This is an example where adults can register themselves for the activity for the full family. You can put an amazing photo, which I highly recommend. Photos perform very well for parents. They wanna see something. So if this is cauldron cooking, we wanna have a photo of somebody using a cauldron and something is clearly bubbling in that cauldron, right? So keeping that in mind as you're building out your activity, you're gonna hit save and continue. Those notes for parents that I was talking about. So if you're doing something where you're teaching an art class and you want somebody to have supplies ready, or if you're teaching cooking classes and you wanna have a recipe list so that they can follow, you're gonna put this in the notes for parents or here in the order confirmation note. So you can put access instructions in here so that parents get that upon confirmation. Um, you should have seen what that looks like by registering on Sawyer. You would have had access to all of that information. You can see what it looks like in live time for the registration that we took for this event. Okay, so once I've built my activity, I save and continue. I can build as many of these as I want. I can also copy them. So if I just wanna change the name or change a few of the details, you can copy activities very easily in Sawyer. You can also set up form fields. So if you wanna know, is your wizard allowed to fly home alone after class? You can ask that. And why I say a registration experience is important for online classes, you still wanna to get to know that family. So if you wanna do a special shout out on your Zoom call and you wanna ask, what's your child's favorite color? We wanna give a shout out in class. Or you wanna put like, what's your favorite uh, stuffed animal? So that you have a little bit more fun knowledge about that family. This is a really great way to do it. You have a ton of fields that you can customize right on Sawyer Tools as well. Location, so you're going to set up an online location. So we support obviously when you are able to reopen and do online versus 
in-person classes. You can set up as many locations as you want under your business. So if you run classes at multiple locations, you can do that. You can also set up one that's online. So when you set up an online class, you're just gonna put online as the name. You can put that it's online via Zoom link, put more details in here as well. You can also control your time zone. So knowing that you're online, if your classes are being held in Eastern Standard Time, you wanna make sure that your time zone matches your under location. Um, and any of these other details, these are things that you would use normally um, when you're setting up a normal location. Okay, so I've set up my building blocks of my schedule, and now I wanna show you how simple it is to schedule that activity in Sawyer. So you can see here there are a number of ways. So a semester is a way to consider this a container, right? So if I'm doing a recurring class that meets every Wednesday for 21 weeks, I can do that. If I wanna do something that's more of a one-off event, I can do that here as well. So Care of Magical Creatures 101, I could do that for just a smaller time frame. Um, here, if I just schedule a semester, you can see our cauldron cooking class here. And let me edit this to show you what that looks like. So here, when I'm building a, a schedule listing on Sawyer, I'm gonna choose whatever one of my activities I want. So for this one, I'm gonna use that online cauldron cooking. This class link here is going to be whatever URL you're using to host your class. It can be a live link for whatever streaming service you're using, like Zoom, like we did today. It can be a Facebook link to your Facebook page where they're gonna tune in for your Facebook Live. It could be a link to a YouTube private access that they need to enter a specific password to. So you can do that as well here. So any kind of URL that you wanna use, and this is dynamic, so if you need to change it every week, you need to change it before every class, you can do that as long as it's 30 minutes prior to the start time, it's always going to populate that join activity button that we send directly through Sawyer. You can also put in any of your access instructions. So if you want them to know that you want them to, to log in using Zoom, you'll get a reminder 30 minutes prior, you can go ahead and set that up. You're going to schedule however many weeks or whatever details you want here, the day and time, however many kids you want to accept. So if you have the Zoom account that allows you to have 100, if you have the even larger one that allows you to go up to 1,000, you can do that for any of these. You're gonna to go to save and continue. And now here's where the fun begins. I'm gonna talk through um, a little bit about pricing options that you can test. This is, I'm sure, on every kind of registration software, but I think we do it in a really delightful way where parents are like super easy to use, not confused. When you start getting into like pricing options of like full semester and monthly and drop in and free with donation, it can be a little overwhelming for people. So I wanna show you how, how nice it looks sort of from the parent point of view. Um, and this is an example of like a widget that we could embed on anybody's site. You could do this in a calendar view if you like that um, kind of look and feel a little bit better. So if you want that, or you can use this listing view, which I personally like because it allows you to see all of the amazing photography. You also have control over this announcement banner, so you can make that customizable for your business. Um, and when I'm a parent, when I click into more info, it's going to show me all of those details. So here, any of those URLs that I typed in, what those payment options, so if I have multiple payment options, it's going to give me those at checkout. And it's going to make it really easy for me to register my child. So it's not going to be like that clunky experience where you're just pushing through um, a link to a parent via Zoom. It's going to give you sort of this option to be able to have a really delightful experience just like they would registering for a normal class, except it's going to take this online. And again, you're gonna collect all of the information that you really need from that parent who's registering so that if and when you reopen, you're going to be able to market to them in really fun ways. So just know that registration software is not um, kind of unnecessary in these online times. It's still a really great experience for a parent and it makes it super easy to follow as they're kind of navigating all of these different options for their child. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to our presentation here because I wanna show you some of the ways that we help to market and merchandise classes. So if you have not already, I highly suggest you go to highsawyer.com, online classes. We have a really great landing page that as soon as you set up a class on Sawyer, it's automatically connected to our marketplace. So you don't have to worry about, do I have to list this somewhere? Do I have to like give a schedule to somebody? Do I have to discount my programs more than I'm already doing? Nope, the answer is everything that you want on your website automatically can populate there as well. Um, so just know that that's a great way to attract new customers. Right now in these times, 
a lot of families all over the country are experiencing the same thing. Um, and so know that you can extend your community, whether you're online, um, and, but you're in New York, that doesn't mean that somebody from LA or San Francisco, like we have here today, joining us from all different parts of the country, um, know that we are here to kind of help merchandise your classes and promote them in really thoughtful ways on our marketplace experience. So um, I wanna show how real providers that we work with are testing some pricing options and share that with you guys because I think it's important to know that you have a ton of flexible options with Sawyer, but also just as you're thinking through what you might wanna test for your business going forward. So um, quick water break. Okay, so testing some free pricing options. So you can do free with suggested donations, which is really great here. So you can set it up as a free class and we do optional add-ons here that you can see, like if there's a suggested donation, optional donations here, this is all part of the same checkout process. So even though your class is marked free and you get somebody to click in here, parents are very likely to donate if they can. And so it's giving you an entry point with somebody where if they can't afford to donate, no problem, they can take the class for free. But if somebody does have the means and is able to, this is a nice way of being able to kind of do both and see, again, if you're testing pricing eventually, but you wanna start free, figure out a way to see like, what are the average donations that you're getting? And that can kind of give you an indication of what you might wanna price these classes. What we found is anywhere between 10 to $25 for drop-ins. Um, again, you know, we always, if you're thinking that your classes can accommodate a larger volume, you might wanna do a lower price knowing that you can have up to 100 kids in that class. Whereas if you're capping your classes at your normal, like let's call it 10 to 15, you may wanna charge a, a more substantial price knowing that they're going to get more personalized attention. So that could vary depending on the type of business that you run. Some other options. This is another one, this is Kidville, um, my previous company. Um, so they are friends of mine and, and it's funny because I never thought I would be working with them uh, at Sawyer for at least for a while, but um, as soon as they, found themselves in a position that I'm sure many of you are in where they had to close their physical spaces. They needed to think quickly and wanting to go online and sort of worked out that we were also quickly working here to be able to support businesses. So I get to work with my friends again. Um, so this is what they're testing right now, which is a combination of drop-in pricing and packs. So you'll notice here their drop-in price is $14.99 a class, um, but you can also get discounted like drop-in rates by doing class packs. So that's something that we support in Sawyer. Think of it as like a punch pass. You're buying five at a time, you get a little bit of a discount built in, same with a 10 pack. So you can do that to kind of test that and see are people willing to buy in bulk? How often are they dropping into classes? It's another thing to consider testing. Um, weekly camps and events are something that we are seeing more and more of these online options for people. And you can see here, Cinema Kids does some amazing, um, they're kind of equipped to be able to do this on a regular basis, even though they're normally in person. So they do a lot of um, special effects, teaching kids how to go on camera, it's a theater program, but they're doing makeup and special effects online. Um, and it's a full week long course. So if somebody is doing something where you wanna take a, you know, a week long cooking course or sewing course, or you know, building robots, and you think that it requires a little bit more step by step for the week, you can set up weekly pricing with us and that's something that they are currently testing um, for their business as well. And then here's another option for somebody who wants to do drop-ins, right? But also if you wanna sign up for the whole semester, because let's face it, we're gonna be inside for a little bit longer than I think all are comfortable saying, um, but set up a 10 week session like Naptown Sings and Plays did here, right? So somebody can just do a la carte if they're not sure that they want to come to this reoccurring class, no problem. They can drop in and out as needed. But if somebody does wanna buy the full experience from now until June, just know that that's an option as well. So you can do a drop-in pricing that you may not normally do, but test it for online, um, but still do your semester enrollment or a longer extension um, class. Just know that you can, we can support that. And we're seeing people testing all sorts of options. The other thing I wanna show is membership. So membership is uh, this idea of you buy a membership, it's either a month, a year, you can have like different perks included with it. But this is an example of one that um, uh, one of our providers who does more reading and um, instructional content, they did a lot of pre-recorded and so they didn't wanna do live streaming classes, but they wanted people to be able to have a subscription to gain access to weekly content that they were going to be sending in a newsletter. So this is an example of that. They set up a membership through Sawyer 
Um, they were testing two different options, right? Um, and then they wanted to give some more flexibility to be able to um, have that content and information be shared. So once somebody buys a membership, they're pulling that list every week and sending them a really thoughtfully designed constant contact or MailChimp um, email that in contains all of their access links for that week that they're getting by paying for these memberships. So just know membership is another way to think about this as well. And then kind of the other outside of the box idea that we're seeing that I absolutely love, and I think we're getting a lot of interest in this, is how to test, we have a really great party um, private event set up on Sawyer that you can do to gauge interest if you do birthday parties normally and you wanna do a virtual private event, a lot of parents are looking for stuff right now. So you could put something out there with a starting price. Um, and then it's basically a request form that a parent can do and you can invoice them if and when they're ready to book. But it, it creates a sense for you to gauge interest. So if you're doing private lessons, but you're not sure what days and times somebody wants, see what, what sticks by putting this up on your website um, and you can gauge interest. It's basically like a form, but it looks really nice and you can merchandise it with photos, you can put more details in there, and somebody can request more information about taking one of these private lessons or setting up a private birthday party with you. So again, it's just another creative way to think through revenue stream and think through how to meet families' needs um, as they're kind of thinking through this new landscape, okay? So those are some of the pricing content options through Sawyer, but I wanna talk through how to market this, right? So you have an active audience of people that you probably talk to on a regular basis that are kind of waiting for you if you're already testing online content. You've already probably done some of these, so it's, it's not anything that you probably haven't thought of, but just some creative ways to think about marketing online content to families. So Instagram, why I love Instagram and my friends here at Kidville, check out their Instagram account. They've done a really great job about pivoting very quickly online. Um, they don't have a marketing team. It's literally one person who's using Canva for free. So don't, don't think that they, these look really professional, but it's not as hard as you would think. They have a ton of templates on software companies like Canva who are offering free services right now for people that want to test some stock imagery, want to get a little bit creative. Um, but you can see here a number of things, right? So what you want to do when you're leveraging your social accounts with online content, you want to create a sense of FOMO, right? Like, hey, we miss you, here's all the fun that's happening online. If you can't join us in class, no problem. You wanna highlight some of these specific experiences. So you can see here they do a combination of videos in here. They also have all of these, um, what are considered highlight reels. So these are all highlights. And if you have different categories of content or snippets from classes, consider putting them up here on your um, highlights in Instagram, um, on Facebook as well. You can have different curated images and videos on your page as well. You also will notice here, there's a combination. So some of this is a stock photo here. This is um, content that is from customers. So it's a combination of using organic photos, things happening live, um, but also know that you can use really professional photography as well to balance out maybe something that doesn't look as high quality or high res, but social media is a place to really highlight your um, parents and some of the organic content that you have as well. Link tree, we're, we're going to share as a, a tip. When you click on somebody's link tree, it's a way you can customize where you want them to go. So it's a way to kind of manage all of your links in one place. So if you don't just want them to go to your website, you can have multiple links that they can click through um, that take them directly to content folders, directly to your YouTube channel or some of the other things that you're thinking through. So um, make sure that you're creating a thoughtful visual narrative. This is the main grid versus your Instagram stories. Stories are really great to have like, it, it's, goes, um, go, it's gone in 24 hours. So if you want something to just be there right away for families, maybe it's not as edited Maybe it's just a really cute video of a kid sharing or singing, um, but know that that goes away in 24 hours. Make sure you're curating your grid to be a very thoughtful experience here. So you can see like this is a join a live art class. This, they were doing a magic show. So making sure that you're promoting the things that are happening online um, and then sharing something really remarkable so that anybody who missed it feels like they missed out on something really special um, and is encouraged to then join the fun, right? So leveraging your social accounts is huge. Okay, 
everybody has an email list, I would imagine, right? So leveraging your content and your email list and segmenting your audience to give different messaging about the same thing, right? So for your returning families, letting them know like, we're ready, one, two, three, we're live, we're coming to you live, like enjoy your same friendly faces, highlight the people that they would already know and love, highlight the titles that you're going to be doing online if those are like your signature classes that they can experience in person. Um, and if not, just give them a reason to check it out and whether that's like giving them a free trial week whether that's giving them like your first visits on us, whether everything is free and you just want to give them a promo code specifically for your families, just know that I would change the messaging to reflect the audience that you're talking to. Um, for your past customers, maybe they haven't been to a class in a long time, but now everyone's stuck in at home. Um, give them a reason to come back, right? Say, we miss you. Experience our new online classes. Here's something for you. Again, it doesn't always have to be a discount. I always caution people to get people thinking through value add instead of discount. Discount works, of course, right? If you say like, it's for free, you will be like, sure. But you, what you wanna start doing is rewarding people to help you out during this trying time, right? You need to be able to cover your expenses, whatever that looks like for you in this landscape. So just be mindful about what you're giving. And if you're doing a limited time offer, know that you can give one free class. It doesn't have to be every class is for free. Give them an entry point to be able to test and try and see what the magic is um, all about. And then if you have a general interest list, you want to let them know like, hey, people are talking about us. Here are the things that parents are saying. So things like sharing reviews, testimonials, things that you can do really easily by collecting quotes from families. I'm sure you have a ton already if you've been testing online classes of people loving their experience and just thanking you at this time. Um, if you have people that are normally coming to you for a certain experience like, if you do birthdays and events and you are offering online virtual stuff, give them a reason to come back, right? Give them a reason to try something different. So if you only had them celebrate a birthday with you, but now you're offering these really great free classes online, you just want to, you know, extend an invite to them in a really nice way. You're just going to tailor that messaging to them, right? Um, and then customer acquisition, right? Share this with a friend, share a link to my class. Join on Sawyer, right? Like send, like the reason registration software is great is because you're going to gain access to those customers. And rather than just sharing a Zoom link to them where you're not collecting really key demographic info from them and an email address at the very least, um, this is a really great way to be able to push through those messages and have people help you spread the word about your classes as well. The other thing too is, depending on the size of your customer list, if you're doing certain activities, you can tailor messaging by age. There is a ton of content that you can do um, through just something for free, which is the email platform that you're already using. MailChimp and Constant Contact, we are, support an integration with them. Um, those are the most frequently used that I've heard. If you use Emma or something like that, typically it's a little bit more robust, so talk to us if you are. Um, but just know that email, email and social, they're free. You already have those channels. You do not need to pay for advertising right now slow as many of those expenses as you possibly can, get as thoughtful and scrappy with the channels that you already have access to, and know that if you work with a provider like Sawyer, we also have our online marketplace and will help promote your business for a ton of new customers that you may not have gotten on your own, okay? And so some online events, if you are thinking about events, a really fun entry point, like as opposed to an academic class, an online event is a really great way to have the widest variety of the audience, right? So even if your classes are normally for two and up, for example, you might want to do a class or an event like a magic show, a music concert, a block party, a meet the team mixer, something cute, a teacher demoing, a live art class where everyone gets to hold up their project together. It's a really great entry point for families to discover you. So if you are thinking through, hey, I just want to test some things. Events are really a great way to test it before you go into a structured class environment. If you are thinking through this, just because you can have more appeal and the widest variety of kind of ages that might be interested in doing something together as a family. If you can do Saturdays and Sundays, parents are desperate for activities on the weekend. So just know that that's something that a lot of people are talking about. A lot of people are hungry for um, and something to do together as a family. So even if it's as simple as putting on great music and doing a family dance party, it goes a long way during these times. Okay, 
All right, we still have a couple people joining, which is really exciting. Hi, welcome everybody. Um, personalized outreach. This is like, if you really want to go white glove service, which I love, I think if anybody has ever gotten a handwritten note, oh, actually, I can show, um, remind me afterwards, I got, I ordered something from a really small business on Amazon, and I use Amazon Smile, because I don't want all my money going to Jeff Bezos, I want to like support local businesses, but somebody sent me a personalized thank you note, and it made my day, and I'm sure like, it just went a long way, I, I gave them a review, I told people about it, like I shared it on my social platform, personalized outreach helps, um, and it really helps you stand out in a sea of emails right now. I'm sure a ton of you are getting like emails for days of just everything, sign up online, do these online, buy this, buy this. And by just sending mail, which I mean is really thoughtful, um, you could do a handwritten email. It doesn't have to necessarily be like stationary and postage. But it's like snail mail is a really kind way. Um, even if you use paperless post is another nice way that I like to send a thank you, a digital thank you note to people. It's free to use. Um, paperless post is great. You can push through a really nice like message to them like, thank you so much for joining our online class. I hope you loved it. Please consider donating. Please consider coming back. So again, just personalizing it, making it thoughtful is, is a really easy strategy that again, costs you nothing but goes a long way in spreading the word and making this as accessible as possible. So I'm gonna wrap up so that we have time for Q&A. Just know that we're going to be sharing all of these amazing resources. These are blog posts that we've created to really support our business owners that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Know they're available to you as well. We hope you find them helpful. Um, even if you decide, again, not to join on with Sawyer, we totally get it. These are interesting times. And so for us, we just are really excited to be a platform to be able to do educational um, content like this and teach you a little bit more about how to get online, how to do it quickly, know that you have a team of people here on Sawyer to support you um, as you're kind of thinking through these questions. And so let me see what's going on in the chat. Amazing. Great, it looks like these um, blog posts are amazing. I am absolutely going to be able to share this session. I would love for you to share this with anybody that you find um, it could benefit from it. So don't be afraid. We'll share that link. Um, we would love to talk to them. If you want to share, you know, uh, if you want to send them our way, we'll demo the site. There's no risk involved in that. Um, our sales team is really kind of amazing and does a really wonderful job, I think, of, of getting to know what each of you are looking for. And, and if we're not a good fit, they will say so, right? So um, just know that we're, we're really thoughtful about that. And like, I would never... As somebody who, I mean, there are just certain businesses that I'm like, this is not going to work for you. So depending on what you're thinking about, let us know. Um, so I'm going to open this up to questions. If anybody has anything specific that they want to go through, um, I'll share one other fun Zoom thing that I was doing the other day. So I'm going to do this whiteboard. Can you see my screen? Okay, great. So you can do a virtual whiteboard with your family. You can do an eraser. So if you're a teacher and you want to say, hello students, and hopefully you can spell, welcome to our classroom. You can also give controls to people so that they can go ahead and access this. They can also draw on here. So if you want to do lines and you want to do different boxes, you can do that, right? Um, if you want to do free form, just squiggles. Oh, wait, I have to change my color. Uh -huh. Ta -da. So just know that there are some really great fun ways to, again, create engagement, bring the fun online, whether you use a whiteboard, whether you use um, polls or questions, whether you just use emojis or fun backgrounds. Zoom is a really great way. You can do this all, for the most part, on GoToWebinar and Facebook as well. All right, any questions? No pressure if not. We are here standing by anybody has any questions, feel free to type in. If anybody joined a little bit late, not to worry, we're going to share the full presentation and video so that you can watch it on your own time. Um, probably give us, you know, a little bit of time just to process it, save the video recording, and then send a follow-up email. Um, but we should hopefully have that to you by tomorrow at the very latest. Um, and if anybody has any questions about Sawyer, um, we have an amazing Sawyer team here, um, feel free to email me directly as well. I'm just Dana, D-A-N-A, -A, dot brown, like the color with an E at the end, at um, highsawyer.com. So 
If there are no questions, no problem. Uh, we will end the webinar. I'll stick around here in case anybody has anything, but thanks so much for joining us. Thank you to everyone who took time out of their busy days. And I hope and, and wish you all wellness and health and positivity as you kind of navigate the next couple of um, weeks, hopefully not that much longer, but um, just know that we have, we're a team here ready and willing to support you. Um, okay. Yes, so um, got a question from Meg, thank you. Um, to integrate past students, yes, we can do a customer integration for sure. Um, if you were using a registration software, um, we can definitely do that. It takes a little bit of time from our engineers. So I would say if you are thinking of doing that, um, what we do is we have uh, an import sheet that we can provide to you and then depending on their bandwidth, Typically, it takes a couple of days, um, but we can definitely do an import of customers as well. So without further ado, I will kind of end our time here. Um, thank you so much for joining us today and stay tuned for our follow-up.